Hi guys, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me tonight. I sure appreciate you being here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time during the week. So thanks for joining me. Uh, we are doing a little embroidery how-to series. Uh, we did the first one yesterday on how to make perfect, nice, neat and clean stitches. And tomorrow we will be looking at how to do embroidery stitches. So different embroidery stitches that will be used in the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home uh, Block of the Month quilt along that will be starting and also my Craft a Happy Life uh, hand embroidery kit and pattern that will be starting during the same time. So uh, that's tomorrow, but today we are gonna look at something I get asked a lot. Uh, I get asked with uh, the six strand embroidery floss, so you might uh, recognize a skein of embroidery floss like this. It's got six strands in it. There you can see all, all six of them there. I get asked all the time, how many strands do I use? So tonight we're gonna look at that. We're gonna actually stitch a line with all the different combos. We're gonna do uh, my favorite, which is three strands. I just think it's a nice uh, medium sized line and we're gonna see what it looks like all the way down to one strand and all the way up to six strands, the full, the full amount and just, you know, kind of talk about why you would do one over the other. And we're also gonna test out a few other, uh, a few other threads that people like embroidering with as well. So that's the plan for tonight. I just wanna remind everyone that uh, the Craft a Happy Life sale is going on right now for my little embroidery kit. So it's 20% off right now on the website. They have a, I have a link in the post here. And uh, that's why I want to be doing these embroidery stitch along or the, the, the live embroidery stitch alongs, but also these little videos beforehand. Just if you're nervous about embroidery, there's going to be embroidery in the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home project as well. Uh, if you choose the embroidery over the applique. So if you need a little refresher or if you're just unsure about a few techniques, I'm hoping that we can go over them uh, in these three days. So yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And you know, while we're doing the stitch along, you can just ask whatever questions you like as well. So, all right, tonight, let's look at the different thicknesses of uh, thread, the different number of strands of floss. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around. Let's get going. Thanks for joining me tonight. Okay, guys, thanks for coming in. Alrighty, here we go. I got my embroidery hoop all set up already. I got my hoop and my fabric in here. And uh, to start off, uh, here's our six strand embroidery floss. And again, here you can see, I think up close, that we got the six little strands in there and they, they come apart really easily. And that's on purpose because in embroidery, uh, people like stitching with different amounts of floss to get different effects. So if you stitch with a little thin piece of, of uh, floss, like maybe just one strand, you're gonna get a really delicate look versus if you're stitching with six strands, which is gonna be a thicker line. So when, when you're thinking about how many strands of floss, you're really thinking about how thick do I want my line. So, all right, to start off, I'm gonna show you how to actually separate your threads. Uh, there's a couple different ways. I'm gonna actually cut this in half. Oh, you entered your travel art folio. Oh, you received a blue ribbon. Nice, Joe. <laughs> that is awesome, congrats. Oh, how fun. That's just neat. I entered a, a doily in the, the state fair once and it's just fun. It's just, just a silly thing entering in the fair. All right. So uh, here's kind of the way that I learned how to do, how to separate threads, but I, I'm doing it a different way now. So I'm going to show you this first. This way it really only works if you are doing if you're splitting the six strands in half. So three strands and another three strands. So you, you separate three strands. So I got three strands over here and three strands over here. And then I slowly pull them apart. And what's important is to not let these threads on the side touch 
the middle thread, otherwise it will all just get tangled. And what I find often is I get a tangled mess from doing it this way. So uh, that is, you know, you can do this if you just want your three strands. If you try just taking two strands out like this, you're gonna get a really big mess. So here is the way I like doing it now. It's kind of magic. So this is, this is a little short, I just cut it in half. Usually I like working with um, about uh, 24 inches or so. And actually, you know what, we can do that. I have one here. I have all my, my numbers of threads lined up here. So here we go, it's about two feet long. And uh, I am gonna just separate the threads at the end, like that. And I am gonna just grab one thread one of the strands. So here you go. I am, I'm separating the one strand from the rest and I'm holding it in between my two fingers. And I'm gonna just pull on that one strand and all of this is gonna bundle up behind it like a huge mess. But once that strand comes out, here it is, it all relaxes and there's no knots or anything whatsoever. It's, it's just like, kind of magic. It looks like a crazy knot, but nothing. So uh, if I wanted to do three strands, I would just do that two more times. So again, separating my, uh, my single thread here and pulling on it and letting it bunch up behind me. Boop. And one more. Yep. It's so fast and easy. It seems, it seems weird that you'd spend time, you know, doing the um, you know, pulling out each strand, but it doesn't knot up, it doesn't twist upon itself when you do it the other way. And then you just take your three strands, line up the ends, and uh, you're good to go. Just kind of drag your, your finger across, and there you go. Now you got your three strands. And you know, if I wanted one strand, I would have just pulled out one strand and we'd be good to go. So, all right, that is how I separate threads. So let's take a look at different line weights. Uh, for my Craft a Happy Life kits and and really almost all the kits that I do, and it, you know this is what I did last night too. I almost always use three strands of floss. First of all, I think it's easy just dividing the thread in half. Then you know that you have um, three strands. When you get your, done with those three strands, you'll have that other half of three strands left. So you don't have like a weird amount, like you know, you don't have four strands and then you finish stitching and only have two strands left over. So I like stitching with the, the three. So let's let's start there because I just want to show you what that looks like. So I have all, all my threads divided here already. I'm going to thread the needle. Uh, to thread the needle, what I like doing is I squish the ends in between my fingers like this and then I gradually open and the moment I can see the thread there, the floss, I put my needle over the top and then I keep undoing my fingers and you can just grab, grab that floss. So like last night, just so I have my thread out of the way, I'm going to do a little away knot here. I will stitch this in later. Okay, so three strands. My way not, I'm just throwing over there on the side. Let's label these. So this is three. I'm gonna just stitch a tiny little three here. Let's see how good I can do with three without drawing it. But yeah, so you might want to just try out different strands. If you're used to doing six, uh, you know, give two a try. You'll get a, a much thinner line. And, you know, sometimes a reason that you might want to do this is if you want, you know, like really delicate flowers or something. Okay, this is a crazy looking three. But you might want, uh, you know, little blades of grass that are just one strand and then like the flowers, a bigger strand, uh, just, just to have differences in, you know, texture and size. But I typically use the same amount throughout and I just kind of go by if I want a really delicate look or if I want kind of a heftier look. So here we go. I'm going to do a few more stitches. This is a little quick back stitch. And I'll weave in the end quick just so it's out of my way. 
you know what? I think I might make a little, a little chart out of this when I'm done or like frame it up so I can have it by me uh, when I'm stitching. So, so I can just reference it. So there we go. That is three strands. I'm going to just weave in the end quick. Uh, yeah, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's nice to have, uh, just have all these threads out of the way when we're stitching. This is always how I end my floss, weaving in the ends to hold it there. And we'll snip. Okay, now let's see what six looks like. So just so we can see a difference right away. And we might not stitch all of them, uh, all the widths, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going to just snip. When I have like a big frayed edge like that, I always give it a clean snip. It's much easier to thread. Alrighty. So this is six. All right. I'm going to tie a little knot again. You know what? I think just for the sake of speed, I'm going to just tie a knot at the end. And uh, I hate doing this, but I'm going to do it tonight. Just have a knot right at the end. So here is six. Oh, you can't watch. There's something with wrong. Oh, you're having a hard time with the video tonight, Linda. Hmm. Dang, I hope that's not, uh, not for everyone tonight. It seems to be fine on my end tonight. But yeah, the YouTube replay will, will be up in an hour or so. Hopefully the, the uh, Facebook replay is okay. Don't know. You never know with, with uh, the interwebs. All right, so let's do our little line again. Oh, video won't play for you either. All right, guys, you know what? I might start over just, uh, just to make sure that you guys can see it. Because, yeah, it looks, the count looks kind of funny and stuff too. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go out and come back in. Sometimes when I do that the second time it works better. So, all right, I'm going to do that right now, guys. So I will uh, catch you in a few minutes here. Hey guys, so I am popping back in here. Uh, the first video didn't seem to be working very well, so we're gonna try this again. Uh, thank you for joining me this Thursday. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. Uh, I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, so thanks for joining me. Hopefully you guys are able to watch and it's working. I see you start uh, starting to pop in again, so hopefully the video is a little bit better. Uh, sometimes the second time's the charm. Uh, we'll just keep going, though, because the YouTube video will be okay, so hopefully... Uh, it's going all right. But tonight we are looking at the different number of strands in uh, embroidery floss. One of the questions I get asked all the time is how many strands of floss do you use? And uh, it's kind of based on preference and you know what the look you're going for. And we're going to just see what that look is. We're going to stitch all the different weights of uh, embroidery floss that you can do. And we started already in the last little video. So uh, oh, this is a three and a six. So uh, we have three strands of floss, which is what I typically use, and we're working on six right now. And when I flip it around, you'll really get to see uh, the difference starting. We'll do the whole range, and plus we'll try out some other, some other thicknesses as well. And uh, this is, so uh, we did a little video yesterday on how to do neat and even stitches with your embroidery. Perfect, clean, neat and even stitches. Uh, and tomorrow we will work on a few embroidery stitches so you can uh, learn, you know, some of the basic stitches. And these are the stitches that we'll be using for my, uh, my Craft a Happy Life embroidery pattern. We'll be doing a stitch along for this coming up soon. And also the uh, I Love Home Block of the Month uh, Quilt Along by Jacqueline Steves. That's starting on Monday, and that will also have embroidery in it if you choose to do the embroidery. So I thought a few little lessons before we get going uh, would be good. And if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, if we don't cover it tonight, we'll cover it another 
another evening for sure. So I want you to feel confident in your embroidery when we get going on all these projects. Uh, if you do want the Craft a Happy Life kit, it is available right now. Uh, it's available tomorrow's the last day for it. No, today's Thursday. Uh, Saturday's the last day for 20% off on the Craft a Happy Life kit. And that's uh, in the link above or below in the description box here. So if you're interested in that, I will send one your way. And all right, let's look at the different uh, thicknesses of thread here. It's, it's from the six strand embroidery floss using the different number of strands. So thanks again, guys, flipping you around. All right, so here is where we left off before uh, it kind of froze up or I don't know, hopefully it's working uh, for you guys this time. But here is our three strand thickness and here is our six. So already you can see it's much, uh, it's much thicker than, than this one here. I'm going to do a few more stitches. And again, this is kind of, you know, my go-to is the three strands. All of my embroidery pa patterns, if you're looking at the cover image, they're almost always three strands. Uh, that's how I learned to do it, and I just kind of stick with it. Uh, but there's sometimes on occasion that you want something to look really hefty or really fine and detailed. And uh, in those cases, at least me personally, that's when I'll switch to more strands or, or less strands. And, you know, it's kind of, it's good to have a guide. It's look, it's good to see what they all look like. And then you can just make, uh, make decisions, make informed decisions on what, um, what kind of you'd like something to do, what it, what you want it to look like. But yeah, when we're talking about different strands, we're really talking about how thick do you want, want your lines. So just to go to the other extreme, let's do the one strand. And if you guys wanted to, uh, if you check out the last video that didn't quite work, it will, this will all be in the same YouTube replay video, but in that video, I show how to, um, how to divide your strands of embroidery floss. All of this floss is coming from a, a skein of floss. So six strand embroidery floss, uh, you can see all the little strands coming apart. But when you see it on a skein like this, and you see all the little threads, uh, you can see each one individually like this. It's uh, most typically six strand embroidery floss. So, all right, let's do what one strand looks like. So I'm just gonna throw my away knot in here again. All right, so one, we'll go right, well, yeah, we'll go a little higher. So here is one. Let me know if you guys can hear me or if the video is being weird again. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's a bit better. So here's a back stitch with the one, one strand. So there are other ways to control your thick and thin lines uh, with embroidery besides your the number of strands, and that could be just the stitch that you use. Like some stitches, like the stem stitch have uh, have a couple threads, like you do a stitch and your next stitch is kind of next to the stitch you already did. So it almost makes it look like it's doubled up, but you're still just using the less amount of threads. But this is another way to do it. But look how delicate this looks. Here, I'm gonna weave in the end and then we'll we'll take a look at all three again. Ooh, this is barely anything to grab on when I weave in this end. So when I weave in the ends, I'm really just trying to grab as much as I can. Oop, yeah, I didn't get much there. Because the more I can catch, the better, uh, the better it's gonna stay, the end. But it's, just pr it's pretty secure. All right, so there we go. Here is what a one strand looks like compared to three, which is what I typically like doing and then six, which is quite a bit uh, thicker. So, I mean, especially between the one and six. This you definitely use for some delicate, delicate work, maybe even some really delicate little lettering. And then if you want something bold, 
you know, that six is obviously very different, especially if you have them in the same, in the same embroidery. If you have some uh, single uh, one thread and versus six, you know, this might pop quite a bit more than the, than the one strand. But I, again, typically keep it about, all right, I usually stitch an embroidery with just, just one. So you know what, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you guys what some other threads look like, and then we'll fill this in with the, the rest. Well, you know what, let's just keep going. I'm going to stitch two strands and then we'll fill it in with the four and five and then we can see see all of it. You do heirloom baby clothing and use one to two strands. Oh wow, I bet you that looks just so beautiful and delicate. So I haven't done much with, with the one or two strands. However, we did do a lot of it on the Splendid Sampler and that's kind of making me fall in love with it a little bit more. I mean, I love, look at this number one. It is so just little and delicate. I, I, uh, I'd love to do a whole embroidery with just, just one strand sometime. It's just very sweet. My three strands is just kind of a good middle of the road thing. Uh, um, it's a nice bold line still without being too thick. This two strands is nice too because you can easily fold it in half to make four strands and it still is really delicate. So here's a big number two here. Let's see what that looks like. So when you do them next to each other, it doesn't look like much of a change, but you know, if you're comparing it, uh, you know, like the one to the six, it is quite a bit different. And I'll, I'll take it out of the hoop when we're done here and uh, we can look at it a little closer. Trying to stitch a little faster. But yeah, if you guys wanted, uh, I'm, I'm gonna do this. Uh, just stitch one of these for yourself and uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to mount this or maybe just frame it in a hoop or something. But this is something that would be nice to have just around my embroidery supplies. So when I, when I try a new pattern or if I start something new, I can reference it, reference the different line weights. So I'm going to make this into something. Maybe a little wall hanging something. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it's a good, I think it's going to be a good reference for me. All right, that's two strands. I actually do really like working with the two strands. I just don't do it often. My go-to is that three. All right, let's do four and five. I got it all ready already. Let's get a better snip on the end here. Like red work, uh, which is when you stitch an embroidery, just kind of like an outline embroidery in all red. Uh, that would be just really beautiful and delicate with the one strand, I think. But you know what? If with the six strands, if you did like all one color, it would just look, I think it would look really comfortable and, and homey too, you know? So it's just really what look you want to go for. All right, got to figure out how to stitch it for. Do the long line first. We gotta fit a little five in there too. But yeah, again, my go-to is three, but sometimes it's fun to experiment. I mean, now you're starting to see like a gradient in thicknesses almost. Sometimes I find if you're stitching with the six strands, sometimes depending on your fabric that you're using, it can be a little difficult to pull your thread, your fabric through your, your thread through the fabric, just because sometimes in a tightly woven fabric, uh, it's just too much bulk. And uh, we'll, we'll get a glimpse of that in a little bit here. All right, I'm gonna put one little tiny one there to end it. All right, let's weave in that end and then quickly do the number five. Oh man, uh, 
jet just flew over, it sounded like. Windows rattling a little bit. Alrighty. And last up, we got the number five. Last up for the, the six strand embroidery floss, but we're gonna try some other things too, because some people like uh, playing or, or embroidering with uh, other size threads besides the, other thread besides the um, six strand embroidery floss. So we'll check out a few of those as well. All right, a five, let's see if I can stitch one of those. So for me, this is feeling awfully thick again. Like you can hear it, you can hear the thread rubbing on the fabric uh, as it goes through. Uh, that can actually, if you use too long of a thread, that can actually thin the thread as you stitch because you know, it's, it's friction. It's almost like you're sandpapering the thread with each stitch. So sometimes as you, as you go up in size, you might want to go up to a, a looser weave fabric too, but I don't know, on this little lightweight uh, muslin, this unbleached muslin, it seems to, you know, work well for a lot of different sizes. Okay, let's stitch a five strander. Get a few more in there. So I hope you guys are excited for all the embroidery coming up. Uh, it will be combined with quilting. So uh, next up is the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month quilt along. So uh, it's a bunch of cute little blocks with an embroidered or appliqued house in the center. And I'm gonna do a combo of embroidery and applique, I think just because I think I just like that look and I want to experiment it with, with it a little bit more. Uh, so we'll be doing embroidery for that. And as soon as we finish block one of that block of the month, uh, we get one every month. Uh, but once we finish that first block with the time we have left before the next month, we'll be stitching the craft a happy life embroidery. So that's why I've been talking about two little projects at the same time, because they do kind of go uh, one after each other. So here we go. Here is one through six strands of embroidery floss. I mean, now you can really tell the different widths and, and look at the numbers too. Once they're stitched as something, you can see how it just gets bolder and bolder. Uh, so something you might want to experiment with. Uh, all right, next up, uh, here's a thread that people like using a lot. I've used this before with embroidery too. This is pearl cotton floss. Oh, you're anxious for that too. You're doing both applique and embroidery. Yay, Rosalie, that's, that's uh, I think it'll be fun. It'll be a fun experiment. But this is size five embroidery floss, I th or uh, pearl cotton floss. I think, uh, what are the other sizes? Like eight and 12, and it gets smaller and smaller with the bigger numbers. I think that's how it works. But this is size five, so it's kind of thick. Uh, what you'll notice with pearl cotton is that it does not, it does not come apart like the, like the six strand, it is it is a twist and it's it's tightly twisted. It doesn't come apart, so you kind of have to choose your size beforehand. Uh, like I said, this is size five, uh, size five pearl cotton floss, and it does come a little bit thinner as well. But this is this is what I like using usually. But let's see how it compares with what else have we got here. I think I'm going to label this. Ooh, see it's. A little more difficult to get in my my uh, the eye of my embroidery needle here. If it gets uh, too difficult, I do have an alternative needle with a larger eye. So, all right, let's give this a try. All right, this is let's just call this P. So you can hear it rubbing. I'm really kind of pulling it through here because it's a thicker thread. 
I'm gonna try and stitch these smaller numbers with the thicker, thicker thread. Might not work. Now with one thread, I could stitch these itty bitty, itty bitty things. But all right, this is a P, and I'm gonna write a five next to it too. So this is pearl cotton five. Oh, I you know Judy, I have not done stump work before. Uh, it's something I'd I'd love to try. Oh, I can't even, I don't even know if I can picture it in my head right now. Is that where you, um, oh man, you're gonna have to ex describe stump work. I know I've, I've looked into it before, but that was a while ago. Um, we'll have to give it a try. I'll take a look at it uh, when we're done here again, just to refresh my memory, because I think what I'm thinking of is the wrong thing and it's messing up my brain. Uh, it's putting a different picture than what I think it should be. Use pearl for, oh, Hardinger embroidery. Yeah, they're just all sorts of embroidery. And you know, cross stitch is a, is a type of embroidery to, but yeah, one of these days we'll have to play around with a bunch of different styles. I think that'll be, that'd be kind of fun. So this uh, already, this, this pearl five strand, or five, size five pearl, it is definitely looking in this five and six range. Uh, but you can see it almost sparkles and I, and that's because of that, of those twisted threads, uh, it lays, I mean, they're twisted up so it catches the light differently than, uh, when all the threads just lay flat. Oh, okay. So three, three dimensional embroidery is like the stump work. Is that where you do the embroidery and then you kind of like stuff? Uh, you can stuff a little bit of the fabric underneath so it stands up a little bit and then keep stitching over the top. Is that what it is? I'll have to look it up. I need I need to find myself some images. But yeah, that'd be kind of fun, Judy. All right, here we go. So I would I think it's actually a little bit closer to the five strand. Maybe that's uh, by design. Uh, Pearl five is close to five strands of embroidery floss. I'm not of six strand embroidery floss. I'm not, not sure if that's a thing, but they do look awfully close in, in thickness, these two. But look at, that, look at the sparkle just from that twist. All right, there is uh, two more bits that I would like to try here after I weave this in. Next up, I wanna try 12 weight or a fill thread. So I know people I've heard, especially while we were working on the splendid sampler quilt along, a lot of people liked using or wanted to know at least what, um, what the 12 weight thread works as. So here's the, the 12 for the 12 weight. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty thick thread for a sewing machine thread. I mean, that's kind of what you're using it for is decorative stitches in, uh, um, in your like quilting sort of thing, but you can use it uh, for embroidery as well. So we'll we'll look at it. Uh, we'll look at it single thread, and then we'll look at it doubled up too, because I know some people like doubling it up. So let's just call this A one and A two for Orofil. Um, oh, it's twelve weight. So let's see. There's a, you know, Orofil's just the brand. You can get a whole pile of um, different brands that have the 12 weight. So let's let's put a 12 down. 12-1, one. <laughs> all these numbers. So let's do a 12-1 for one strand and a 12-2 for two strands. But this is, this gives you a really delicate look again, which I kind of love. Um, you know, I haven't done much embroidery with just uh, just one strand of 12 weight like this, but dang, I'm already liking it. It's a nice solid thread. Like you don't feel like it's ever gonna break or anything. Sometimes, sometimes with one strand, it feels a little delicate. Like if you pull too hard, you might just bust it, but uh, this doesn't feel like that at all. This feels like a sturdy, sturdy uh, thread to use. So this is 12 weight. Uh, I'm gonna put a little dash. And uh, this is one strand. 
So let's do our little backstitch test again. Yeah, oh man, I already I already can tell that I'm I'm going to want to stitch with uh with this more often for just like little delicate work and playing with color and and stuff. I think this would be kind of fun. It's away from my from my norm of the 6 strand. Is 12 weight always on the orange spool? So the orange spool is for the 50 weight. Uh, this is here I can show you. So this is this is the 50 weight, which is much thinner, and I'll show you the difference in thicknesses if you're used to the 50 weight. The 12 weight is on an is on an a uh, red, more of a red red spool. So if you're seeing the uh, orange, you're a little you're a little too light. So here you can tell it's much much thinner than the uh, than the 12 weight, like quite a bit. So the 12 weight is the red. The red spool for, I mean, and that's just for aur aurafil. I think any other brand would say 12 weight on there somewhere. All right, one last stitch and then I will cut another piece and we'll double it up for the two strand. And I just wanted to show you that because I've heard uh, of people doing that before. Again, this is not what I typically use, although it's awfully fun using it right now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how close, I mean, I think this, I think one strand is kind of falling into, uh, what, two strands of the six strand embroidery floss? Okay, that was a lot of numbers, but let's, let's look at it. Uh, I think the 12 weight with just one strand, it looks a whole lot like this two strand here. So not as light as the one, it's pretty close to the the two so I would consider that pretty similar um, just different looks I mean this again it's twisted thread so it's much shinier than the flat uh, sitting um, just the strands of thread that we took apart all right let's do one more of that and then I want to do one more for fun which is uh, some yarn because I enjoy stitching really big things with yarn sometimes have you embroidered with regular throwing, sewing thread? I have not. I mean, that, that I'm sure is super duper delicate. That's probably even less than this one strand. But man, if that is the look you want to go for, for like some really delicate detail um, or just like a really kind of wispy look, that I think would be pretty interesting. So I just doubled this up and uh, doubled it up with uh, my needle at the loop area. So let's draw a 12 two here. I know it's taking a little bit of time doing all these numbers, but I think it'll be helpful for me just to see, see them all when I'm done. So this is two strands now of 12 weight, uh, 12 weight thread. And this is, uh, I mean, as expected, because this was close to the two, having two of these together is closer to the, um, closer to the size four, the four strands of six strand embroidery floss. So, I mean, the nice thing about all this is that you can use kind of whatever you have available. Ooh, I'm not going to have enough. <laughs> I'm not going to have enough for my back stitch here. I'm just going to have enough for these numbers. We'll see if I can fit in some back stitch yet. Might have to be kind of some big back stitches to save thread. Ah, well. Alrighty, here we go. Yep, this is definitely a little thicker. Ooh, how about silk? I have not uh, sewn with silk before. That would be a fun time, a fun thing to try. There are some beautiful silk embroidery threads. And you know, there's ribbon, you can embroider with ribbon, and I have not tried that either. Uh, but that would, that would all be something that, I mean, we should, uh, we should add that to this little chart sometime. And you know, metallic threads, those kind of come in all different, different widths and stuff too. All right, here we go. So you have to keep making the chart bigger and bigger, and then you'll be able to see. I kind of 
like stitching with this Aurifil though, this 12 weight. I think it'd be, it'd be fun to experiment with that a little bit more. All right, let's snip that. And uh, one last one that I'd like to do, since I, I like stitching large embroidery sometime, and by large, I mean with yarn and um, in a big quilting hoop and stuff too. So I wanna just show you uh, what that might look like. So I'm using, I'm gonna use a slightly larger needle. This is a cruel needle. Uh, the eye in cruel needles are a little bit bigger than in embroidery needles. So I can just show you here. And it still has a sharp point. So with embroidery, we're always looking for um, a larger eye and a sharp point. You don't want a dull point. Like a cross stitch needle is, um, has a dull, a dulled point, a blunted point. Uh, we're looking for a sharp point. So this is the cruel needle. It has just a little bit bigger of an eye. And uh, why I'm switching to that is because I don't think I'll be able to fit the yarn through that other eye. And if I can't fit the yarn through this one, I have a, a backup needle with just even a bigger eye. So again, I'm gonna do my little squeeze method and oh, that worked, that worked great. So there we go. Uh, let's grab a portion of this. So, one thing you have to remember or think about when you stitch with yarn, if this is something you'd like to try, I think we should do a, we should do something like this, like a big stitch along with like yarn sometime. But uh, one thing you want to think about is that this is a whole lot to fit through uh, the little, the little, um, the weave of the fabric, the small weave of, of the fabric. So a lot of times if you're planning on doing a project with yarn, you have to up the size of your weave. So this is uh, this is kind of a loose weave. It's a, probably a little looser than a uh, quilting weight cotton. But if I was to do a whole project in this, I might want to find uh, um, a muslin or a fabric that's even got a wider weave. So where you can see like all the little holes even more because you want to make it easy for yourself. If you're spending all your time yanking, um, yanking, uh, your needle through or like if you need a pliers to pull it through that's not going to be fun for a whole embroidery and even just then I had to pull quite a bit so let's 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 put a Y here for yarn and I know yarn comes in all different sizes and you know what I'm not good at I know like bulky but I get super confused on yarn sizes that's something I gotta gotta get my brain wrapped around a little bit but this is kind of like a just a medium weight medium weight kind of yarn but here we go much thicker but like you can get just a really fun look and just you know after these couple test oops pulling pulling it through there after even a few of these test stitches I would definitely uh be like nope I'm gonna start again with a, a larger weave fabric because it's just too hard to pull through Actually, it's not all that bad, but compared to, you know, a nice little thin piece of embroidery floss, it's quite a bit. Oh, you're going to embroider the barn owl. Oh, Irene, I'm excited about that. So you'll have to share in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see it. So Irene's talking about uh, a project from my book. A lot of the projects, actually, I stitched with yarn in the, in the book because my book is all about, like, how to make how to make uh, embroidery the star of your project. And sometimes that means going big, at least, at least in my head. And actually, if you try stitching an embroidery with yarn, you'll kind of be amazed because it goes so fast. It's so quick to, to stitch with yarn because your stitches can be bigger. Uh, you're covering a whole lot more ground uh, faster. And it's actually, it's really kind of fun. So it does go quick stitching uh, something big and we'll have to do that on here sometime we haven't done that uh, we haven't done a project like that here yet that'd be fun all right there see I made it across in just three three stitches there I'm gonna weave that in and uh, we'll take a look at all this again but again same process I'm just weaving in in the ends but yeah, you kind of have to match the size of your thread, especially, you know, if you're doing something crazy like with yarn, to the fabric and to the needle. They all have to fit together. And you'll know pretty quickly 
if something feels off, like it's hard to pull through or, you know, it doesn't fit in the eye. Oh, linen will work perfect. Yeah, linen usually has a really nice big weave to it. So Irene, that's, that sounds like it'd be, it'd work great. So, all right guys, here is what we got for tonight. Uh, we can kind of see, uh, this is so here, it's a nice little chart. We can see what one strand through six strands looks like. And then some of these alternative, alternative threads. Again, this is pearl cotton uh, five for the weight or the size, size five pearl cotton. This is a, a 12 weight uh, thread, like Orofil 12 weight uh, with one strand and then Orofil 12 weight with two strands. I would, again, I would call, I would kind of compare the one strand to two. So that's a fun, easy way to just, if you do a lot of quilting and you have a lot of Orofil laying around, just, you know, don't worry about getting more embroidery supplies or anything. Just use your Orofil 12 weight. And then this uh, two is, I would say, closer to the four area here. The 12 weight uh, with two strands is like using uh, four strands from the uh, six strand embroidery floss. And then for fun, some yarn. Uh, but you can really see how using different materials and different sizes can give you different effects, I think. And you know what? I think we'll have to do an embroidery sometime too where we use all different sizes and then we can just see it a little bit more. But again, little delicate work, uh, little blades of grass or something like that. Uh, and then, you know, getting to something thicker and you want it to look sturdier or more close to the forefront. Uh, you might want to go up in size. But I, like I said earlier, usually stitch with one thread all the way out and it's just kind of the look. If I want it to look super delicate, I'll go with one or two strands. My typical is three. That's what all of my patterns are. The photo on the cover is, oh, all the three strands. But if I want something really hefty, you know, I'll go to six strands, which is, which is without splitting anything. Or, you know, yarn, because it's awesome and fun. <laughs> So, okay guys, I think that is the where we're gonna stop for tonight. Uh, again, if you're interested, the Craft a Happy, Happy Life embroidery kit is on sale right now. Uh, the link is in the post. And we'll also be starting the Jacqueline Steves project on Monday. So uh, I have the link to her newsletter in the post as well. That'll tell you all the, um, how much fabric you need and, and your patterns will be sent to you through that email. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll finish up. Hello again. Uh, thanks so much again, guys, for coming in. Here, here you can kind of see in person a little bit better uh, the thicknesses. But fun, I'm gonna make this into a little chart and have it just sit next to me when I stitch, I think. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be kind of funny. I'll, I'll show you that when I get it done, whenever that is. But uh, thanks again for joining me. And tomorrow we'll be going over the different stitches that are in the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home uh, Block of the Month quilt along and also in my Craft a Happy Life kit. So thanks again. I hope you had fun tonight and be sure to let me know if you have any questions. Uh, send me an email or ask in the next uh, live stream. Uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies and it will stay here on Facebook as well. So thanks again, guys. Have a great uh, Friday tomorrow. I will catch you tomorrow evening. Good night.